Hey, it's Sarah and welcome to my fourth video and today I'll be talking about what I would do differently if I could restart my computer science degree. This is a video I am kind of making for my younger self. Someone who is entering university really scared and really not sure about how to handle myself and how, how to handle the university experience. So if you're in the same boat starting out with university or even in university, this could be helpful for you. A little bit of background about myself. I'm a third year computer science student at the University of British Columbia. I actually just started my second semester of my third year this week and it's been crazy and I know that some of this advice that I'm saying is probably gonna come back. I'll probably be taking some of this advice throughout the semester. So my first piece of advice is if you know the degree you want to do, computer science, definitely spend some time and plan out your next four years. This doesn't have to be any concrete course planning and have everything set in stone, but it just gives you a general idea about what the degree requirements are and what your faculty requirements are. This process might actually help speed up your graduation some courses might only be offered in certain semesters so it might be helpful to figure out which courses that you want to take and at what time and when I was entering first year I was pretty scared of the course registration website there is so many courses with so many acronyms and so many numbers I really didn't even know which ones I wanted to take and I took a few random courses because I wasn't really sure of the computer science degree requirements Requirements. UBC actually has science breath courses, so it just means that if you're in the science department, you'll have to take some science courses in different faculties. And I didn't really know this at the time, so I ended up taking two first year chemistry courses instead of taking a chemistry and a bio course. And I actually just took the bio first year course last summer. Number two, use all the resources that your university offers and take advantage of the university experience. You're paying a lot of money to go to a pretty great school, so take advantage of all the services the university offers. You can talk to professors or talk to TAs, go to office hours, and this doesn't really necessarily have to be related to course material. You can talk about the different streams of computer science that you might be interested in pursuing, anything like that, career advice, something along those lines. Your computer science degree will not just provide you with computer science knowledge, obviously, but it'll let you meet such cool, like-minded people who are interested in your career and might have really cool ideas to offer. For example, in my data and algorithms course that I took last semester, I met this girl who works at Microsoft and she told me to switch from Java to Python when I was doing lead code and answering interview technical questions. I was kind of hesitant about this, but obviously I trusted her and I switched to Python and I never looked back. I There's so many reasons why I think Python is better. It's cool that the people that you meet who are in the same field as you can give you cool advice about your career and the path that you want to be taking. Number three, this is kind of a no-brainer, but it took me a little bit of time to realize. Take summer courses if you're not doing co-op or internships. Summer courses are generally shorter, and this probably means that it's going to be easier since they cut down on course content. This is a really good way to get your electives out of the way and not have to worry about them throughout the rest of your degree. But I definitely wouldn't recommend taking any course requirements during the summertime just because it could be a little bit rushed and you might miss out on some important information. Number four, don't brain dump all your courses. Like, poof. now if you don't really know what this means, I'm kind of talking about if you've ever taken a class that you didn't really think was that important and then you studied really hard for the exam and then after the final or after the exam, you just brain dumped all the information. You just completely forgot about it because you just thought that it wasn't going to be useful. That was me for every single course in first year and second year. Basically, right after my data and algorithms class, I just removed that from my information. But unfortunately for me, I learned the hard way when I was doing the first round of my interviews in co-op is that that course is actually important. You do need to know what a stack in queue is. 
you do need to know some sorting algorithms. You probably want to dump out your math skills, but you should consider that if you intend on taking any graphics courses or machine learning courses later on in your degree, that those math skills definitely come into play and they shouldn't be completely wiped from your brain. Number five, partners, partners, partners. You might want to lone wolf your entire computer science degree, but that would just be so challenging and you would really just make it much harder for yourself. A lot of assignments and projects and sometimes even exams can't be completed on your own and you would put so much more time into it that needs to be put in. So it's definitely really important to find some good and reliable partners. This is a mistake I made during COVID. When the classes were all online, I found it nearly impossible to make friends and find partners for my classes. So there were actually a few classes where I didn't have partners, but it was kind of recommended that you have partners to complete the labs and assignment. And there was one assembly class where I did not have any partners and I was basically rationing out my grades in terms of what I could forfeit because I could not complete these labs and assignments on my own. This past semester, I met some wonderful people I was able to work with and they definitely help with assignments, but also just your understanding of course material. Getting another person's perspective and hearing their explanation really helps your own understanding of the course material and gets a different side of what you're hearing from the professor, which is really great. Number six. This is probably something you don't want to hear, but assignments, projects, midterms, they'll generally pick up around the same time. I really don't know how professors manage to do this. I don't know how they communicate through the departments, but somehow they managed to make all these major assignments, major projects, and midterms all happen around the exact same time. So I get it. It's super overwhelming when you have assignments due, labs due, tests tomorrow, everything. But what I definitely find as the best advice is to, okay, this is a hard word, come compartmentalize. That is probably my best advice. Focus on the assignments, the tests you need to study for, that you need to do today. Anything you need to do and maybe some of the things you need to do tomorrow. But definitely don't think about the tests or the assignments or presentations that you need to do a week from now. This will definitely help you focus on whatever you need to do today, whether it's an assignment, and work through it without being stressed about a mountain of things you need to do in the future. Number seven, give up on textbooks. This might be a little bit controversial because I don't know if this applies to every single course, but I do have have a bit of a problem with computer science and math textbooks. I don't know who writes these, but they're very smart and they try to make the words only readable to very smart people. Usually these textbooks are super convoluted and very not concise. My data and algorithms course textbook was so painful to read. I just developed the skill of briefly skimming through it and then googling whatever it was and looked for any other explanation explanation, any other video online to process this information to really understand it through a different lens. In high school, we kind of get used to getting all the information handed to us. Everything that we need is laid out in front of us, but in university, it's important to develop these skills to get information that we don't understand or don't have the complete picture of on our own time, online or through other resources. Number eight, forget about the grades. In the past few years, I've had several professors, when they're talking about their syllabus or right before a final, they mention, don't worry about the grades, just do your best. And this is honestly so reassuring. It's kind of like a warm hug. It reminds you that this whole process is really just about learning. If you understand the material, if you really get a good grasp of it, and if you put in the effort into the course, the grades are just going to come. Last semester, I had two classes, my data and algorithms and my C assembly class, and let me just tell you, I really did not think I was going to do well on either of those finals, and somehow, magically, I, I passed the class. I think I passed the finals. I think that 
somehow, somewhere, the grades just appear as long as you just put in the effort, you put in the time, you learn something from the course, good things just happen. Even if you don't really think that you should have gotten those grades, your grades will probably not look like your high school grades, but that's okay. Like that's just a part of the experience and doesn't mean that you didn't learn anything and it doesn't mean that you're not a good student. It just means that we're in university right now. <laughs> if you're really worried about your grades and whether or not you're gonna make it into co-op or grad school, I really can't speak too much on grad school, but I do know that your first two years of university don't really count towards grad school but for co-op, I would say that for, especially for computer science, co-op isn't necessarily the most important thing. You don't actually need co-op to get internships, to get that work experience during your university degree. There are so many jobs out there that you can get on your own. In the last two semesters, I've pretty much gotten all the interviews without co-op. I've just applied to places on my own, on LinkedIn, on company websites anything like that. You do not need co-op. So if you're stressed about grades because you really want to get into co-op, I would say you don't need to. Number nine, if you're struggling with your classes and you notice it, get help early on as soon as you can. This is another story of first year and having my first year expectations of university just completely shattered. I somehow still can't believe this, that a requirement for university calculus is that you have already done calculus. I actually really liked calculus in high school, but after calculus in university, that, that ship has completely sailed. I knew when I was going into calculus 2 after just completely skimming by calculus 1 that I was toast. So. I got a tutor and tutors can be a little bit expensive, but I actually got a tutor with one of my friends for this class and we just split the cost. The tutor honestly really helped me so much with this class and it, you can get help anyway, you, anywhere. You don't need to get a tutor. You can talk to your TAs or you can talk to anybody, but if you do feel like you're struggling early on, definitely get help as soon as you can. Because if you start falling behind in one course, it's kind of like a domino effect with your other courses and you might start falling behind in your other ones. Number 10, dealing with imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is so real. I remember in first year, my chemistry teacher talking to me about it and I was like, you hit the nail right on the head. I think that everyone experiences it at least once during their university career. I feel like I could ramble on about imposter syndrome forever because I deal with this feeling so often. Every single semester with every single class, I just question, am I even supposed to be in computer science? Should I even be here? Am I, am I, I'm not cut out for this, am I? I vividly remember in my first year computer science course, I think it's computer science 110 if you're at UBC with Gregor. I love Gregor. This class is so, it's kind of infamous for having like a binomial distribution just because some people really get it and then some people don't get it. For my first midterm, I think I got a grade that I was not used to seeing since high school. And I remember over dinner talking to my parents, telling them I don't think I should be in computer science I don't know I didn't realize I was this bad at computer science even though I thought this is something I wanted to do I stuck it out and here I am three years later so that's my advice to you if you really enjoy it I thought this is something I wanted to do just stick it out you are probably fine honestly <laughs> you're probably fine one bad midterm one bad course does not define you and you're you're meant to be here you're meant to be in this program program, especially if you got in and especially if you enjoy it. Imposter syndrome is something that you'll feel at one point and probably more than once, but it really shouldn't stop you from doing something that you love. There will probably be somebody out there who is smarter than you, who probably may not try as hard, but does better than you. And you shouldn't really be bothered by that at all. It shouldn't affect your performance and it shouldn't affect how much you enjoy your degree. Number 11, don't be afraid to look stupid. This is mostly for me because I think in high school I did care a lot about 
what other people thought about me. I cared a lot about the way I dressed, the way I presented myself. I definitely wanted to be seen in a certain way, whatever that way was. I, I don't even know at this point. Don't be afraid to look stupid. Make mistakes. It's okay if you don't do very well on a test. It doesn't mean anything. That's, that's okay. And it's okay if you go into the wrong classroom. It's okay if you have your phone out and you're like walking around school looking for your classes. Everything is okay. Nobody really cares. Nobody's really looking at you. There's so many people and everyone's focused on their own own life and their own thing. This is a little story of just like the most, such an embarrassing moment for me, but it probably just like nobody even thought of it this way. I was biking to the gym because I think it just made the, I just didn't like walking. It would take like way too long to walk. So I just biked to the gym and I think there was a bit of snow on the ground. On my way to the gym, I already was slipping all over the place. But on my way back, I thought I could, there was like a hill that went, a hill of snow that went up on the curve. And I thought that I could just ride over the hill and go onto the curb. But what ended up happening was I didn't and I just ate shit. <laughs> and I just went like, <clears throat> the person on the other side of the road and the person in front of me, who I just fell in front of, they both like stopped in their tracks and they both just like stared at me. And I don't think they either really said anything and they just looked at me and then the girl right in front of me asked me if I was okay and I was like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm, I'm fine. I really tried to brush it off, but I, I was really, my ego, my ego was really hurt, honestly. So these little stupid things happen and it's totally okay. Just laugh about it, make fun of yourself. It's just all part of the fun and nobody really cares. Don't be afraid to look stupid. And finally, number 12, don't forget to have fun. That is so corny, and I feel like everybody says that, but it's honestly so true. Whatever that fun may look like for you, whether it's hanging out with some friends, going out on a Friday, or just staying inside and playing Animal Crossing, have fun. This might just contradict some of the earlier tips I gave about planning out your degree so you can like get it done earlier, but university is a really rare time in your life. It is a special time when you're 20 where you only really think about your own responsibilities. Enjoy it the best that you can. I know that homework sucks. Finals are poo, but enjoy the little moments if you can. When I was in first year, I was going through a little bit of stuff and I picked up a bunch of hobbies just to like get my mind off of things and it was so much fun. I learned how to knit and I learned how to crochet. I made a bunch of little things. I did a little bit of painting. I just spent a lot of time by myself and it was really fun. Just enjoy the process when you're in university. That is, that's what it's all about, honestly. Just remember that this is a little quote that I heard, but time flies when you're having fun or not. It just flies either way, so just trying to make the most of it. So that wraps up my video. I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe some of this advice was helpful to you during your, if you're entering university. Give this video a like, leave a comment about what you're most, what you love most about university, and subscribe. Bye.